Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Chockney and this is Eat So Many Cakes and we are here to have a look at the items within the scale called Crown Crates as there will be a second EZO Plus bonus event to do with the scale called Crown Crates. This EZO Plus bonus event will start on Tuesday the 24th of April at 1500 hours BST and will finish on Monday the 30th of April at 1500 hours BST. All that is needed to gain a free scale corner crown crate during this time is to simply log into the Elder Scrolls Online game with an actively paid EZO Plus membership during the 24 hour periods. These 24 hour periods are timed as between 1500 hours on one day and 1459 hours the next day. You have to actively log in on each day, you cannot leave your game already logged in over the day change so that the game can register your free scale caller crown crates. If you do not have an active EZO Plus membership, you can try it out for free during this event, but you will not receive any of the free scale caller crown crates. And you will receive your free scale caller crown crates on May the 16th. And we get a chance to earn up to six maximum. I will leave a link to the Elder Scrolls Online webpage which announced this EZO Plus bonus event if you would like more information as I have just outlined the basics. And now we will take a look at the items within the crown crates. So to start off with, pricing. As you can see there are three different pricings. You've got the 15 times crates at 5,000 crowns. You can purchase four crates at 1,500 crowns, which also happens to be the same amount of crowns that you get each month with an EZO Plus membership. And then you can buy the one crown crate all on its lonesome at 400 crowns. There are also three Radiant Apex items that are not shown within this Crown Crate page and they are the Dragonfire Wolf, the Galvanic Stormsteed and the Shadow Rider Senchi. Senchi. I can never pronounce that word. These can only be gained within the opening of the Scale Caller Crown Crates. They cannot be bought with Crown Gems and that is why they don't appear in this crown crates list. Again, I will put a link down to an Elder Scrolls Online webpage article showing what these mounts look like. Otherwise, we will take a look at what items we can actually gain within the crown crates. To start with, we have our 8 pack items, and there's only 6 of them. We have our Frostbane Bear. The bear was also one of the ancient Atmorian animal tokens, associated later with the Nordgard Sun. So the Frostbane Bear has historically been one of the most prestigious mounts a tradition-loving Nord could ride. And he does look kind of cute. Oh, you can see like the evaporation coming out of his nose. Have I said that right? Then you have the Frostbane Camel. Perhaps the Atmoran Totems and Dreadnoughts sported by the Frostbane Camel actually do help protect it from the bitter cold of Skyrim. Or maybe camels are just too honorary to care. I actually quite like the looks of this one. And I love the little plaits that it's got going on underneath its chin. I love guars and we have the frostbane guar here. So since the guar is native to warmer climates, the existence of the frostbane guar in Skyrim. Theoretically protected from the cold by its dangling talismans, Maybe the strongest augment of those who say the Frostbane Wars actually work. And it doesn't say augment, it says argument. 
so it may be the strongest argument of those who say the Frostbane Wars actually work. And I love the way the armour looks on this Guar as well, because I've got my armour, well, my stamina, capacity, and speed maxed out. So it does look pretty good, doesn't it? Doesn't have any hair, the Guar, so obviously all the funky little bits, the plaits are from the, the actual outfit itself. Then we have the Frostbane Horse, the ancient Nord who came to Skyrim with Ysgrimor, worshipped animal totems and adorned their mounts with symbolic hair knots and hide strips meant to protect their livestock from the frigid climates. These Frostbane talismans are still in use today. And as you can see, you can see the, the plaits that they've mentioned. You've got some more... Well, it's not smoke, because, you know, when there's smoke, there's fire, and it's not exactly going to breathe fire anytime soon. But you've got some more of that mist coming out. And then you've got a little plait on the tail as well, and a little ornament to fasten it up tightly with. Then you've got the Frostbane Saber Cat. Saber cats, of course, are inured to the harsh, wintry conditions of Skyrim and scarcely need warding from the cold. Kitting them out as Frostbane mounts is therefore more of a question of tradition rather than of protection. I'm pretty sure that these saber cats will not need protecting from anything. Look at those teeth that they've got. That is pretty awesome. And just look at the way it's looking at us. Look at the way it's looking at you. It's like, I know I'm awesome. And then we have the Frostbane Wolf. The sacred wolf was one of the most revered Atmorian animal totems associated by later Norse with the goddess Mara. The great Frostbane Wolf is therefore one of the most iconic mounts of the ancient Nords. Oh, they've not even put the tail in a plait. They've done it so that they've just secured like little bands to each part to make the little decorations. Strangely, that's sometimes how I wear my hair. So that's the end of the Apex Rewards and with converted crown gems, you can buy them each at 400 crown gems. So now we're moving on to the legendary items. <laughs> this is the Archaic Dragon Priest Mask, and it comes in many variations, but one classic design was more notorious than all the others. The look the Nord historians have come to term the Archaic Form. That just looks so funny on Eats Many Cakes. Oh my goodness. Then we have the Banner of Periite. Oh, how cute is that? A big-eared ginger mouser is a favourite barn cat of grain farmers all across central Tamriel. Not just because it keeps the storage bins rodent-free, but also for its affectionate personality and goofy looks. Oh, goofy good looks. Bone Dragon Summons Focus. Oh, this memento is apparently showing on the other side of my screen. So with this memento, for just a moment, you can conquer the awe-inspiring illusion of the rise of the dreadful Bone dra Dragon. So let's just briefly come out and position my character a little bit more center so we can try again. a bit better. That's got a bit more of an effect now than it did on being in the corner of the screen. So now we have the crown crafting motif 35 Drome of Arthur style. So with these they come in the book forms but you can get them within the game. 
So for the Drone with Arthur style, you can actually earn the motif pages from doing the weekly trial crest in Law of Macaj. So here we can preview what the light version of the outfit looks like. Then you've got a medium. That doesn't look too bad. And then you've got your heavy. Again, just use the left and right button on your D-pad to have a look at the different ones. Oh, that's pretty cool, preening yourself whilst you're in heavy armour. Looking fabulous. I like the shield actually, that's not bad. I quite like the shield for that. Another motif, we have the crown crafting motif 44, silken ring style. And again, this is obtained through the Cradle of Shadows dungeon run. So this is the light version. This is the medium armour. I do not like that breastplate. But the helmet's alright. I like the hair spit sticking out. And then there's the heavy armour. That shield is massive. I suppose with the medium armour and the breastplate I mentioned, I could dye it, make it look a bit better in colour. And then we have another crafting style, the crown crafting motif 45, Mazaton style. But again, you can obtain the motif pages during the Ruins of Masseton Dungeons. So here you have your light armour. I quite like the, the hat for this one. Oh, and the, you can just about see the staff at the top of it. Then you've got your medium. I feel like the, the Helmet has got a bit of a Romanesque look to it. And then you've got your heavy. Just look at that shield with the little feathers sticking out. Ooh, we have a decayed zombie skin. Look at that skin. Ooh, my goodness. Well, the colours certainly match with my outfit. I reckon that would go really well with a zombie personality. Which I got. Hmm, this could be interesting if I happen to get it. Oh, we have a dragon piece costume. Once it is said a cult of dragon worshippers ruled all of the northern Tamriel. Their leaders were dragon priests, cruel clerics of great power who hid their faces under magical masks. Now you can wear the semblance of those legendary Medjai. Some things I think they miss out on when it comes to the Argonians and Khajiits is the tail on these outfits. Surely they would have had some sort of armour or clothing to match on the tails as well. Oh, then we've got the Great Elk. Oh my goodness, is this the one that you could purchase during the New Life Festival event when it first came out in 2016? I think it was something like 4,000 crowns? Though the Reachmen of Markov say they were the first to successfully domesticate the Great Elk of Skyrim and break them as mounts, the Norse of Harfinjar say it was really all their idea. And the riding skill does not affect this mount's appearance. Then we have the Magma Scamp. Scamps are lesser Daedra used as servants and menials by a number of different Daedric princes. The Magma Scamps are servants of Mehun's Dagon and can be summoned from his oblivion plane of the Deadlands. 
He's on fire. And then we have a Pedatine Mustang. The small equines of the subtropical Pedatine forest have subtle vertical stripes for camouflage under the canopy. They've been crossed with the larger Anquin Mustang to create a striking striped mount, the favourite of the first Corinth Hussars. Feel like part of that was tongue twisters. I don't like that at all. Snaff. Then we have the Pararite, the Taskmaster. And this is a large house item. That doesn't look too bad, does it? I might have to rearrange how this is looking again. So this is the Sabre Cat. Sabre cats of Northern Tamriel are possibly even more powerful than their southern Senechay cousins. They are certainly more feral and difficult to train. <laughs> nah, I'm not bowled over by that one either. But this is cute. The sabre cat cub. Sabre cats are mighty and majestic hunters that rule the northern plains and tundra by sheer strength and savagery. But danger take it, they sure are cute when they're cats. Actually, when they're cubs, because they are cats. That's how cute it was, it made me mess up my lines. It looks sad though, look at it, it's just like, hmm, so sad. Oh my goodness, there's another one. The Seneche Tiger Cub. It's a striped Seneche Tiger Cub, what more could you need to know? Ah, you ask, but it isn't magical. Just look in those eyes for your answers. So we all have a look. Oh, it just looks so cute. Maybe the magic that they're talking about. Oh, it's sitting down. Maybe the magic that they're talking about. Is that what just did that too? Is the fact that they may tempt you to try and buy the crown crates. Then we have a tapestry of periite. So within the legendary items, the pricing for the crown gems range from 100 crown gems to 200 crown gems. And you have also got the chance of getting a grand gold coast experience scroll which gains 150 experience point bonus from all sources for one hour and an instant or research major which is for your blacksmithing, clothing and woodworking. Now we're going to be moving on to the epic items. So this one is the Vested Interest Banquet Garb. You'll turn heads when you walk into the banquet hall in this ensemble of shining satin topped by a sharply tailored chacquard vest. Who says casual can't be stylish? Says designer Sirak of Sentinel. Not I. Then we have the Desert Garden Gala overdress. I'm pretty sure this one was in the crown store at one stage. We red guards are a hardy people, says designer Sirak of Sentinel, and like to stage our ceremonies outside regardless of the weather. With this elegant overdress, a lady can celebrate the most festive of occasions, even in a sandstorm. Then we have the Dragon Fassel body markings. In ancient times, mortals wishing to express their utter devotion and fealty to the Dova were known to wear these Dragon Fassel body markings. I keep wanting to say Fessel, but it's not, it's Fassel. They're not too bad, are they? Bit plain. Not as fun looking as the zombie one. Then we have the dragon Fassel face markings to go with it. Oh, now we've got the flame back boar. 
So like the purple daggerback, the breed of flameback boars clearly has some kind of brush with the uncanny that imbued them with magical aspects. Regular boars just don't have crimson glowing eyes and flame coloured bristle crests down their backs. I love the looks of this. Now that is cute. A gold cat shroom shark, shark. It isn't well known outside financial circles, but somewhere in the basement or sub-level of every bank in Morrowind, you'll find the institution's mascot, a sweet old waddling gold cap shroom shark. The symbolism, of course, is obvious. I wonder how many people are going to try and mistake that as an actual shroom shark. Oh, now we have the Majestic Dune Rider Ensemble. Zorak has outdone himself with this elegant outfit inspired by the legend of Prince Azad the Dune Rider. Anyone would look princely in this ensemble of midnight linen and leather, accented with shining silver. Exquisite. Yeah, that one doesn't actually look too bad, does it? I bet it'd be really nice in different coloured dyes. What on earth is this one? Malefic stander, standing collar hood. What is that? Oh my goodness, now you need like a long coat to match it. So you know what's great, if you add a standing collar to a hood and half mask, it suddenly makes you look more dangerous, sinister and threatening. That's what. Well, when paired with this outfit, it looks ridiculous. I can see it now, I can see the collar. And I just... You just need a long leather coat with that. Necromantic sigil body tattoos. Do you dare to wear the serpentine necromantic sigils that display your dedication to the arts of undeath? I quite like them. Oh, and they go all along the tail. I like that. They're quite funky, aren't they? Oh, that's nice on the face. You've got the same style for your face as well. Ooh, you got the scale called a frost shard. Oh, at least we can see it this time round. So use this memento to put a chill in the heart of your adversary by conjuring a brief magical ice cycling before you. It's also handy for chilling your drink. Sorry in Camlorn evening suit. It looks boring, doesn't it? Again, maybe some colour to spruce it up, but I don't think this was my cup of tea. Lady Eloise says, The highborn Breton prefers clothing that is elegant but asture, hearkening back to the high rock tradition of knightly orders, militant but chivalrous. Bright metallic points highlight the buckles and trim. Uh, I suppose the more I look of it, the more I kind of like it. And then the last item is the Wayrest Suede Doublet Ensemble. Now this I'm pretty sure I've seen in the Crown Store before. There's no reason why everyday wear has to look frumpy. A man likes to look good when he's at his trade. And what looks better than a suede doublet over velveteen breeches, says Lady Elise. Courtier of House Mantu. That one's a lot better looking, isn't it? I think I prefer this one over the other one. The pricing for the epic items, they are at 40 crown gems. And you've also got the chance to get the instant ore research for your blacksmithing, clothing and woodworking. And the Major Gold Coast Experience Scroll, where you gain a 100% experience point bonus from all sources for one hour. Now I'll go through the superior items. So first off we have the Beaded Skull Chaplet. Barbaric the early Nords may have been, but they knew how to adorn themselves in fierce finery. 
the beaded skull chaplet is a prime example and you can barely see it on my head it's that small thing right there doesn't look very finery to me at the moment okay so this is an emote <laughs> come get some beckon your loser of an opponent to come and get a piece of you if they dare I think that one's in there more for fun then we've got the dragon bone chain body marking the bones of the Dover have a powerful symbolic significance to worshippers of the ancient dragon cult who created this dragon bone chain tattoo set that looks pretty nice doesn't it I like how it goes down the back of, of uh, Eats Many Cakes tail as well and then you've got the matching face marking oh I see it's it's by the ears and like the jawline then we've got the eternal hunger coronel oh it's a facial accessory you see again that thing in the middle of my head so this metallic tiara with its central stylized dragon head its mouth ever gaping in eternal hunger was popular in the lower level clergy of the dragon cult according to scholars of those ancient times <laughs> my goodness yeah that just looks silly oh this is the one that I got within the uh, first set of scale corner crown crates from the ESO plus bonus event last time. So flip the bird, show the ultimate in disdain for your adversary by flipping the bird at them. And then we have a cute little house cat. This green eyed feline is a distant relative of the Alfie Khajiit. Another emote, I see you. Put your opponent on notice that you see exactly what they're up to. Oh, another one, kick the dirt. Oh, that's quite fun. Taunt your contempt contemptible? Uh, just taunt your opponent, basically, by kicking some dirt at them. Line in sand. Ex excuding contempt, you draw a line in the sand and dare your opponent to cross over it. And then we have the Ruffians Turban Balaclava. When you're doing stealthy work, it pays to be practical. The Turban Balaclava is quiet, shows a low profile, and most importantly, hides your features in cases where there's an inconvenient witness. I think I may have got that one in the free set as well. Looks familiar. We have another head duty thingy. Clergy in the dragon cult below the priest level adorned themselves with the tall pointed diamond symbol known as the sacred rhombus, a design said to be symbolic of a dragon scale. That one looks better. That one I think looks the best out of all of them that I've seen so far. And it matches my hair. So that's pretty good. Ooh, the scale caller rune of levitation. Use this memento to briefly hover anonymously, eyes glowing like a menacing ancient dragon priest. This is the personality for Scholar. Now this was definitely in the crown store at one stage. So ever notice how everyone in Temrail keeps a journal? Now you can show the world that you're making your own scholarly record of your adventures and the deeds of those around you. Perhaps the pen is mightier than the sword. So this is your idol. Again, use the D-pads left and right to take a look at what the emote will actually change. Sorry, the personality. This is Threaten. Oh wow, I'm going to scribble in my book really fast. 
This is annoyed. I'll just draw really long lines at you whilst shaking my hands. Then you've got the tilt. I'm inquisitive. Then you've got Neil. Okay. Oh, we've got yes. What's this? Oh, just a, a like nod of the head. It's like ha ha ha. Yes, I've worked it out. Oh, then we've got the walk. Oh, we can jog. Oh, we're jogging with our book. Obviously, this research is really important. Oh, and now we've got to run away from our research because it's come alive and it's trying to attack us. Not forgetting to never dropping that quill as well. That's some pretty impressive skills that our characters have got. And then it's back to idol again. Then we have the serpent scale body marking. These Ophidian tattoo markings are favoured by those who fear serpents, dragons and other mystical reptiles. I like how it looks on the tail, it's really nice. And then the face marking to match it, oh my goodness. Oh I think I got this one as well on the face. Oh my goodness, what is this one? A star brow diadem. It looks the same as the others. This elegant tiara simultaneously evokes the heavenly stars that are the source of all magicka and the horns of the dragons whom the ancient lords worshipped. Perhaps the ancient Atmorians weren't as barbaric as they're depicted. Tan Morthor Mastiff. Is this the first dog that we've come across? in the crown crate this season. Four mastiffs from Morthor in Skyrim are fearless and tireless hunters, inured to the hardships of the frozen marsh marshes. The frozen marshes. The tan variety is a favourite with scouts, hunters and trackers. It does have a nice colour in there, I do like it. For the colour. And then the prices for this item and for the rest of them in the superior items are 16 crowns. So yes, you can see that I've already purchased. It says purchased, but it's what I collected during the first set of ESO Plus bonus event free scale caller crown crates. Oh, I was right about that turban as well. I got that one as well and of course I remember flip the bird with the fine items you've got your purple gloop you've got your lessons for your mounts your soul gems your repair kits your blue drinks your green gloop your green drinks and a gold coast experience scroll which gives you 50% experience point bonus from all sources for one hour. And these are all priced at five crown gems. And then you have the common items. So you've got your poisons, your mimic stones, your elixirs, and they are all at three crown gems for purchasing in the crown crate section. But I do believe you can make better potions and better poisons if your alchemy is up or you can probably buy them from guild traders or you might have some really nice guild mates that might help you craft some. So whenever I get any of these in the crown crates, I just convert them straight away because I have my own that I use. I do keep the mimic stones though, they're good for some of the crown bought motif styles like the frost caster and the grim harlequin. But at the moment I've got quite a, a bit of the material for that those styles so they just sit in the bank just sort of waiting. 
maybe I should convert some, maybe I should just get some more crown gems. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below. I do like to hear what you guys think. It will always help me to improve on my videos in the future. Ah, uh, see I don't glow anymore now the event's over when I eat my cake. Is this video something that you enjoyed watching? What things do you think I could have done better? If you did enjoy it enough, give it a like. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.